prepare to set fire to the index card of allowable opinion. Your daily dose of liberty education starts here, The Tom Woods Show. Hey everybody, welcome to The Tom Woods Show, episode 2399. Our old friend Carla Garrick is here, President Emeritus of the Free State Project in New Hampshire, trying to bring us uh, freedom in our time. And the, the, the idea here is that the cause of liberty might be advanced better by taking action than by arguing on Facebook and that maybe we try to do something practical, like we maybe we all settle in one particular place so there'll be strength in numbers. I mean, these are ideas. And if you don't like these ideas, come up with your own set. But at least these are ideas and these good folks in New Hampshire are acting on them. So, Carla, welcome back. Oh, Tom, thanks so much for having me. I love being here. All right. We've got a lot. So there's a lot going on that is of national significance in New Hampshire. But why don't we start, uh, if you don't mind? Well, first of all, I... I I'll, we'll get to the Discover New Hampshire weekend in, in a minute, but let's start with this crypto six situation. I uh, did an episode on this some time ago, and now we've we, the, obviously there have been developments. I know Aria Demetso is already incarcerated because my wife has sent her books while in in prison. So oh, wonderful, yeah. So I mean, you, you know what what we can do, and I know Aria has been saying, well, you know, as long as I'm stuck here, I might as well make it like a spiritual retreat of some kind and, and, and read and do what I can. But anyway, spell out for us exactly, because I think this is of general interest to people, what the, what it is that the, who, who the crypto six are, what they're accused of, and what, in your opinion, the, the, the true story is. Well, you know, so the crypto six is basically, uh, people from the keen area, Ian Freeman, of course, from free talk live and they basically ran Bitcoin ATMs in the state and somehow got caught up with the federales, I'm going to assume because, you know, they, they didn't like being taunted and so became a target really for, for federal action. So I definitely think that we should look at this through the lens of, of sort of politics being played out in our justice system. So of the six, as you mentioned, Arya is already in prison. Many of the others who were charged with smaller, lesser crimes did take plea bargains or, you know, someone like nobody who was one of the six who had been to jail several times, you know, was facing a really long time. So I don't think we can judge them. But Ian Freeman actually did say, I am not going to take a plea. I want to take this to court. And, you know, they had the hearings. Uh, the judge actually ended up ruling that the original charge of money laundering should never have been brought. And he ruled on that motion after the trial. So basically, the lawyers for Ian were like, that totally tainted the jury, of well, course. Well, sure, sure. But back up for a minute. Most back serious up, but crime. Hang on just a minute. We, we still have to explain what exactly are they accused. I mean, money laundering is very vague. What exactly are they accused of? They are, you know, sometimes we like to summarize things very neatly and we say, you know, so-and-so, well, sometimes I'll hear a story like, yeah, you know, did you hear the story about that guy? They, they arrested him because he was homeschooling his kids. And I think, I guarantee you, if I look into this, it is not that they, yeah, he was homeschooling his kids and they were living feral out in the forest and not eating. You know, they, they leave out details like that. <laughs> so in this case, I want to be honest with the audience. I want everybody to know exactly what they were doing. They were not arrested for running a Bitcoin ATM. What exactly are they accused of doing? Well, I mean, the charges, the most serious charge was actually money laundering. And then there was sort of conspiracy to money launder and then all these smaller charges but they pretty much were actually charged for running Bitcoin ATMs. But it was I mean, that they the, weren't paying taxes. Isn't well, it that? Well, yeah. I mean, I guess his argument was that it, it's a rare coin and that they didn't have to pay taxes on it and that he was doing it through his church and churches don't pay taxes. You right. know, one of the interesting things here in New Hampshire is three times now free staters have tried to have a Supreme Court here in New Hampshire declare their religions as a church. And they just keep saying, well, you're not allowed to do that. And I was like, who told some judge in New Hampshire he's allowed to tell other people what is or isn't a church? Like the whole system, in my opinion, is just so ludicrous at this stage, especially the justice system. And we saw that actually on September 11th, which, you know, I have to say I'm not super suspicious, but 
my my own trial came uh, my, the decision of my case, you know, 10 years ago now came out on 9-11 and they moved his sentencing, Ian's sentencing trial to 9-11 from another date. So probably 50 or 60 of us showed up at the court. It was interesting because some of the more let's film everyone activists were there. They ended up getting arrested. It was all very, uh, it was very polite. I have to say it feels to me like our, our activism has sort of reached the level where everyone understands that, you know, we're going to do this. We're doing uh, these two activists. We're actually, you know, pushing this idea of why can federal courts say you're not allowed to film in courts? I mean, when you you go to the court and you you look at the stenographer sitting there and it's so, you know, 1940s and we have all this technology and when they want their witnesses to Skype in or to Zoom in, of course, suddenly we're, we can do that. But for some reason, we can't actually allow people to just record the proceedings. So Ian had a lot of support there. Uh, the courtroom twice broke out in applause. They kind of had divided the room in two. So the one side was sort of more the status and the other side was where supporters came for him. Ironically, it was so full by the time I got there. I, my husband and I and a couple of people sort of ended on uh, on the baddie side. But that made me feel good because we had them surrounded. There were so many people. There was an overspill area where other people could come. And then they kind of stacked it, right? So they had three witnesses talk about how they were scammed. So somewhere in this whole story, right, because the initial thing was like, no, no victim, no crime. Like, show us, show us the victim here, right? Certainly when, when you know, Bank of America CEO isn't being thrown in jail because someone used his ATM to do something nefarious, right? So all of it is very strange. It does when you, you know, when you drill down, it feels very like it's a political action against uh, against yeah, of the all Kenyans. people to to go after. Right. I I wanted to clarify not because of course I'm against all these stupid laws. I don't think any of these people should be harassed. I don't think they did anything wrong. I mean, you know that I'm against all these crazy laws. But I do want to clarify that in this world, if you take them on on their terms, this is you know, you you have to know what you're getting into. That it's it's not impossible that this will happen to you, and so if you go into that with your eyes open, okay, that's one thing. But I'm not surprised at this outcome because I know the nature of the of the enemy. Right, and and you know, t- to be honest, I do think that the harder you taunt them, the bigger the the slapback. Right, uh, we've certainly seen that over the years with with folks. Uh, you know. I'm sure we're going to get to talking about it, the sort of court fest thing and talking about, you know, we had RFK there and I brought up Ross Ulbricht. I brought up, you know, Snowden, sort of all these whistleblowers and people who've come before where we know what the state likes to do. It's part of their uh, playbook is to create a chilling effect by taking whoever is a leader in it and then hitting them as hard as possible so that anyone who who was going to step out of line gets scared, right? Like, it's not fun watching your friends go to jail. And so it's it's a clever tactic. I think they do it on purpose. You know, ironically, they they raided the, the property in Keene with a bear cat. That was something we fought because we said mm. the police don't need to have these militarized weapons, you know, and they used the turret. They broke into the house. Uh, I I forget if they actually sprayed uh, gas, but these tanks can actually do that. And so you sort of see it come full circle where, you know, I've been here for 15 plus years. So I sort of know what we've worked on as different groups and uh, in the free state. And you sort of see it culminating where you're like, we said they were going to use the Bearcats to do this nasty thing. We knew that if we do cryptos, you know, and it's just all coming to fruition, sadly. But that also means we are succeeding and that they do perceive, you know, our thoughts and our ideas and, and our presence here as as a genuine threat. Let's uh, I have a, we have a lot of items that I want to cover in it in not so much time here. So uh, I do, of course, want to talk about RFK at Porkfest, in particular, your questions to him about particular items of interest to us and even the secession issue. So we'll get to that in just in in a minute, and 
Uh, but uh, let's let's let you say just a like the fastest possible word about the Discover NH weekend coming up Columbus Day weekend, October 6th to 10th. Sure. So that is basically our call to everyone who likes it when it's really, really, really pretty to come hang out in the free state with us. It's a long weekend. There's tons of stuff happening. All of it is decentralized. If people want to learn more, go to fsp.org and you scroll down like half a screen and there's a link that'll take you to a sign in, sign up genius. Let us know you're coming so that we can help connect you with the right people. But this is everything from you know, a potluck and uh, uh, a Concord Prickle family day, barbecues, apple picking, a shoot. There is so much. I can't even remember what all of it is that's happening. But the idea is, and as I know, if you come visit New Hampshire, especially in the fall, it's hard to resist. And I want as few people as possible to resist us. And I would like more people to move here. So we're hoping, you know, people will find something that they like and they'll come out, meet the community, explore New Hampshire, you know, both as finding people and your tribe and your community here, but also just, it's a great state. I mean, there are lakes, there are forests, there's, you know, you can go kayaking, you can do all these things. The quality of living here is really good. And why not showcase it during the best time of year? Well, the link for that is one of these crazy links with a million crazy characters. So I'm going to, I'll have this redirect link. If people are interested in checking out the details about that, I have it at, I just, just jotting this down, tomwoods.com slash discover NH. Okay. Oh, perfect. Even that'll better. get you right there. Tomwoods.com slash discover NH. All right. Let's talk about some interesting items coming up in the legislative session that you will not generally encounter in the legislative sessions of other states. So other states take note. What do you have in mind here, Carla? So um, I don't know if we want to do the RFK stuff first because it kind of fits in with it or not. But basically, I mean, there's a lot of stuff coming up in terms of the legislative stuff. But the ones I'm interested in talking about mostly have to do with independence, nullification, sort of moving towards this idea of could we be an independent little country and what would that look like? Well, I let, want let's, to be out let's keep the viewers waiting a little bit longer for okay. RFK. <laughs> let's just be nasty and and uh, force them to hang <laughs> on. Tease them, as we <laughs> like to say. So basically, I mean, the two legislative things that are coming up, and maybe just I'll sketch sort of what the background was. Last year, we introduced... A, a bill called CACR 32. And that was basically a independence bill that said, hey, if it's a constitutional amendment and it's like, if you, if enough people in the legislature vote for it, and that's a three fifths majority of delegates, so that's 67% of the legislature would have to vote for it, then it would go to the voters of New Hampshire to be ratified. And that's a 60% vote statewide. And basically it was two sentences and it just said, hey, like if we declare independence, we declare independence or we peacefully go on our way. Uh, that got a lot of flack, right? We got a lot of attention. There was an NBC series that came out of this. Everyone should go watch that. If you go to NBC Boston and you search for uh, the Free State Project, it'll come up. It's like 13 part episodes. 11 are already made, two are coming. So it got a lot of attention. So we feel that it's important to keep this story alive. So this year at Porkfest, I did interview Larry Elders, who was there. I interviewed RFK, who was there. I talked to Vivek, who also came. And I'm naming those names so that people understand we have become a real uh, influence in the state. And politicians understand they have to come and talk to us and understand our needs and what we're looking for. So that's pretty exciting. So these two bills, the one is sort of a repeat of that CACR 32, and the other one is a study committee. And so the thinking is we'll, we'll bring CACR 32 back. Only 13 legislators voted for it, but out of 400, so everyone was like, oh, you guys got your butt handed to you, which, I mean, you know, the numbers don't lie. But also there were 13 legislators who are willing to, to, to go to the mat and say, yes, we're willing to do this because it's up to the voters of the Granite State. It's not up to our politicians to make this decision. And so they're bringing it back. 
the appetite isn't necessarily there. I think people are are a little arm's length or a little scared. It's, you know, politics, it's election season, it's presidential election. So it'll be interesting to see how, how that actually plays out. If I understand the bull correctly, I think it was introduced slightly differently with the wording. So this time there's a triggering event. So basically it would be if you, uh, if the national debt reaches $40 trillion, which is a ridiculous amount of money, by the way, but if it reaches $40 tw- trillion, then it would be the triggering event to put in to allow us to secede. This study committee one is, you know, a softer bill. I think it's being sort of introduced as a alternative or a, a a space where people are interested in this idea, but not quite ready to to you know be on the front lines of this issue. Can start to talk about what this would actually look like from a practical perspective. I actually just before the show, I, I was curious if New Hampshire is still a net payer to the federal government, and we are. I know a lot of states had a hard knock during COVID and because, you know, no one wants to talk about that $6 trillion that uh, Trump printed. But, you know, the reality is there is a lot of money out there. And I was like, I wonder if we're still a net payer. We are. And I think that's a really compelling argument. Why would we be sending our money to the federales who then send it back to us with, with bells and whistles and certain conditions? Why don't we just keep our money and spend it on granite staters. So that's sort of the landscape currently of, of, of where it's heading. Um, I think it's going to be interesting. You know, I think the way we should treat the CACR, the constitutional amendment side of things, is as a general referendum. I think we should bring it up every year. That number may go up or down. I mean, obviously, I like to win, so I would prefer that, you know, if we're going to introduce it, it's not 13, it's 14, or it's 30, or it's 100. That's aspirational. But the reality is, even if it goes from 13 to 2, we can still say, if we want this issue to move forward, we're going to bring it back every time, and we'll just keep every two years, and we'll keep that as the referendum to see if the appetite's going up or down for this. My money is on the support will actually slowly start to go up, because the federal government is corrupt. This whole system is ridiculous. And I don't think we can solve it any other way. Well, you're preaching to the choir here because, of course, I have a, a book called National Divorce. So I'm, I'm very interested in this. By the way, nationaldivorce.com. If you don't have that yet, you will find it quite stimulating. So why don't we go ahead? I was actually going to send a copy to all the legislators. <laughs> yeah, oh, well, well, that's man, not such a bad idea either. I remember when nullification came out in 2010. Uh, everybody in the Idaho legislature uh, was reading it. I mean, it was crazy. They did ABC News did a segment on uh, that. It was the reporter came on and said, a book, and she's holding my book, has got people talking in the Idaho legislature. And I thought, how is this my life? You know, and then the governor said, yes, yeah, such and such, you know, whatever the, the speaker or whatever tried to lend me a copy, but I had to tell him I, I already had one. I already read it. I thought, Come on, you know that's awesome. Yeah, and yeah, actually, yeah. I should mention because you're so heavy on nullification as well. One of the things that the state house has done is they've started this nullification caucus, and I actually am really excited about that approach, right? Because it's sort of a softer sell, and it's something that people can understand. So I think we have a stretch target, which is independence, a free country. You know, I'll be queen of New Hampshire for a day, but. Um, but the reality is, you know, there are steps in between these things. And I think nullification is a really big one. You know, people are not happy with the EPA. I mean, we could do all the alphabet soups. But I think there are ways to incrementally get a lot of granite staters on board simply by being like, why are we beholden to the federal government about this nonsense thing that no one cares about? Hey, everybody, let's take a minute to thank our sponsor, Persist SEO. If you are getting buried by your competition online, then build your brand, your reputation, and your lead flow with digital marketing by Persist SEO. If you are a small local business trying to compete against large companies in the service industry, then increase your visibility with Persist SEO. Or what if you have low or no leads coming in on a consistent basis? Well, then website search engine and conversion optimization can help move the needle to a more prosperous business model for you. 
Are you tired of cold calling and networking, meeting places getting shut down? Use your website as a lead generation engine. Or what if you're not showing up for your services in the search engines? Well, get found with Persist SEO's expert search engine optimization. All you have to do is call 770-580-3736 or visit them at ineedseo.help for a free website audit and consultation. That's 770-580-3736 or ineedseo.help. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, so let, let's shift gears a little bit. Let's, let's say something about RFK, then maybe we can play that little clip and then uh, one or two more things and say our goodbye. So let's talk about RFK. So he came to, to Porkfest. Uh, we talked about that before the, the fact. And um, you asked him some things that relate to issues that are of interest to us specifically. And I think, I know Vivek was recently asked about secession and he danced around it too. He says, well, mm -hmm. he, he doesn't believe in national divorce, but okay, whether you believe it or not, the question is, would you use violence against right. your you know, fellow Americans? I mean, that should be a, an easy question to answer. But I know at Porkfest, or at least I'm pretty sure, he was also asked the kinds of questions that RFK got about particular individuals who are imprisoned we would like to see let out. Am I right about that? Yeah. So actually, one of the things I thought would be uh, a good strategy is if we have these presidential people, and New Hampshire, of course, is the first in the nation primary you know, the DNC and the Democrats are doing some crazy dance. I mean, they are going to shoot themselves in the foot here, Tom. It's, it's, they're so tone deaf at this stage. I'm, I'm, I'm genuinely confused. I mean, amongst other things, maybe we talked about this last time, but you know, the, the head of, uh, the New Hampshire Democratic Party, Ray Buckley, sent this tweet right before Porkfest. And he was like, if R RFK better not hmm. dare show up to these, you know, fringe people's extremist, you know, one's party, you know, right. party in the woods. Right. And, and, right. and, and we were like, what? And ours came was literally like, go pound sand. Yeah. Dude. He was so, I remember you and I were so excited by how he answered. I didn't know if he would answer at all. He did answer. He basically said, this is the problem. My being told which people I'm allowed to talk to, what events I'm allowed to attend, forget all that. And then he went on the offensive and said, you, you know, what a mess the new, new Hampshire democratic party is and all that. I mean, if you're going to start something with RFK, he's going to finish it. Right. And and honestly, and I have to say, I really admire the way he's he's approaching things. You know, he wrote an open letter to the DNC that sort of started with, hey, guys, I know most of you. Most of you are like friends who've been to my home. I've hung out with you. Like, what are you guys doing? You're corrupt to the bone. And I mean, I think he, he you know, well, uh, hopefully he's going to take New Hampshire on the Dem side because... They have to launch a write-in campaign for Biden because he's not going to be on the ballot here because of the way they move their primaries. So I think there's a really good chance that RFK is going to come out very strongly in, in New Hampshire. And so, yeah, we had asked all these candidates various questions. My, my thinking is, from a, from a strategic perspective, let's get these people talking about the issues we care about, that libertarians care about, people who want to expand liberty, people who... You know, let's pretend we could reform D.C. I, again, don't think that can actually happen. And so it's been really telling to see all these people be on the record and to be talking about things we care about. They're all going to fudge, but at some stage they have to stop fudging. And the fact that everyone has to talk about national divorce because we want them to, it's awesome. Yeah, it's about time. It's about time. But, but let's start, though, with the, the non-secession related questions of, that you asked him. Yeah, so, uh, I mean, I could do it in the short version from the tweet that I believe got me banned <laughs> off Twitter. <laughs> Not only am I banned, but they won't put me back. I'm in an infinite loop of uh, just appeals. They won't answer, they won't even tell me what I did, right? So now I'm at the, I'm sending a certified letter with like Esquire behind my name because I can do that. Oh, good. You know? So good. now I'm going to like, lawyer up a little yeah 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 okay okay so basically we asked uh so i you know rfk was the main one because that was a very controlled environment and i had the mic and i got you know he gave us a 50 minute speech and then i got to ask him some questions so you know i asked rfk about sound money and cbdc's i asked him whether he would pardon snow uh, assange and he said yes snowden he said yes i asked about russ ulbricht and he said maybe 
But definitely, if he was made an example of, which you and I both know actually was the case. I mean, it was a political case from start to finish. Yeah. Uh, so technically, he actually said yes on that one as well. I asked about secession, which we will get into in a moment. Uh, but then the funny part is, you know, I, I had my list of questions and Dennis Kucinich, who's Bobby's uh, campaign manager, actually you know, they wanted the questions before the time. And so I sent them, I mean, you know, 11 o'clock the night before it's pork yeah. fest. We're busy. There was a lot going on. Fair enough. And they, they responded that morning and they, there was only one question. They told me they did not want me to ask. And it was not the secession question, which surprised me. Hmm. I mean, I was going to do what I want anyway, but you know, I wanted to be as polite as possible. Um, but the question, and it was a joke question, I thought, oh, it'd be really funny if we end this, you know, sort of Q and A oh. part. I was going to ask him. <laughs> okay, the question no one wants me to ask you, but that I'm going to ask is, Bobby, what is a woman? <laughs> I thought it was going to be as a hot dog a sandwich. <laughs> uh, uh, boxers or briefs? <laughs> Which, by the way, stumped Ron Paul when Alan Mosley asked him. He had never heard the question the, the before. The hot dog question? And he said, maybe we should get a congressional committee on it. Then we'll definitely get to the bottom of that the <laughs> hot dog being a sandwich issue. All right, so do you want, do you want me to try to play the, uh, the RFK answer to your, to your yeah, secession question? Yeah, let's do that. All right, let's go ahead and do that, and then we'll resume in just a minute. Many free staters and many of us in this room, including myself, support secession. Now, I like to call it independence. The what? Secession. Uh, so, wait, seceding. So, um, by way of background, the Free State Project exists because we do not believe we can reform D.C. We don't, th we think that ship has sailed. I mean, I'm excited about you. I think if someone can do it, it's probably you. So, you know, go do that. But, <laughs> but in the event that we are not successful with trying to stop what is happening in DC, we here in New Hampshire, many of us, but not all free staters, but many free staters support states' rights and we support independence because the federal government is out of control and it cannot be reformed. If New Hampshire were to secede, and we are on that path, we introduced CACR 32 last year. It was a declaration that was a constitutional amendment, which meant everyone in the state of New Hampshire would have to vote for it at 67%. And it was two lines, and it said, can we peacefully secede from the federal union? As president, would you use violence to stop us if we did it here? You know what? I'm going to, uh, I'm going to ask that question with the same uh, answer I give when people ask me about Taiwan, which is strategic ambiguity. Um, <laughs> I take it. I, I'm here. I, I'm running to bring our country together and to make people believe in their federal government again and to make people love our nation, to make us proud to be Americans again. Oh, I, uh, you know, I want to move forward on that rather than the options that are going to, you know, further fragment and atomize us. So, uh, you know, I, I, I want to go forward with that kind of optimism. I want you all to be proud of this country the way that I grew up in a country that I thought was the best country in the history of mankind. I want you to feel that way about it. All right, so uh, what do you think about his answer? I mean, he deflected, of course. Everyone is going to. Larry Elder's deflected as well. Uh, Vivek is deflected. Um, and it's understandable, but it's also something that we should continue to push. And we should push it with the framing of, would you use violence against me? Because that is a very concrete way for it to... For, yeah. for, and, for and by the way, if anybody wants to know, if anybody wants to know what a good way to answer this question is, uh, you could always say, uh, look, I, I don't favor secession. I think it's a bad idea. But I also don't favor mass violence. And there has mm -hmm. to be an alternative to mass violence. I favor negotiation. If, if Ronald Reagan to, could negotiate with the Soviet Union, I think I could negotiate with New Hampshire. 
and prevent the outbreak of violence. I mean, come on, we have to be a civilized people and we have to be a good example for the rest of the world. We don't want to be another example of some country in the world that fires on everybody in a breakaway province or something. Surely we are above that. Give that answer. Right. No, I love it. That's great. And and yeah, you know, again, go on record being like, no, I'm not actually going to murder people I disagree right. with. Yeah. That's it's all. not that hard. <laughs> yeah. That's all, that's all you have to say. No, we're we're not, ask, not asking a whole lot here. All right. So as we, as we wrap up, can you say a little something about, this is a book that's been in the works for quite some time, and they asked me to contribute to it, and I just couldn't fit it Aww. in. And that was a great new collection by Joanne Cavallo of Columbia University and Walter Block, our friend, the libertarian who teaches at uh, Loyola, New Orleans, uh, who got his PhD at Columbia, incidentally. Uh, they have a book <laughs> called Libertarian Autobiographies, and it's a series of stories of a lot of libertarians you've heard of, including Carla, of how they came to hold our crazy opinions. And, and I I'll always find that interesting. What particular roads did people uh, go down? Y you have an essay called, in there called Live Free and Thrive. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously I was really thrilled to be invited to, to contribute and, uh, you know, and, and it was fun to really think about what was, how, you know, how, how did I get here kind of thing? Right. Cause you know, it's, it's good to reflect on these things. And I think, you know, I was pretty much born a rebel, but definitely also reading a lot and sort of living all over the world and, and all of that influenced me. But really the reason I'm attracted to the Free State Project is I'm solution driven, right? Like I hate people who just sit around and complain about stuff. Like what's the point? Like if you use your human action, which is the philosophy we believe in, go make changes, like decide what you want and go out and go get it. And so, you know, there's this realization in my essay that, oh, for me, the Free State Project is this perfect solution to, to where I want to go in life because it gives me a purpose-driven life and, uh, and allows me to, to bring people who want to build together so that we can actually do something awesome and cool in the future. The reason I brought it up, too, is because, you know, for a lot of people don't live in New Hampshire and we're trying to bring them here, I really do encourage you to attend our events. Come to this Discover New Hampshire weekend because maybe I'll, I'll just read this. It's a couple of paragraphs, but it's, uh, I actually say in the essay, we started to visit the Granite State from New York, usually to attend the Free State Project's annual events, Liberty Forum in the winter and the Porcupine Freedom Festival, also known as Pork Fest, always the third week in June. On these trips, we'd explore the state independently too. The homemade ice cream stands, the incredible natural beauty with lakes, mountains, forest, and sea. And what can you say about fall in New Hampshire? The trees turn to candy and your eyes hurt from the pretty. Fall was definitely the clincher. Besides, New York City, with its post-9-11 paranoia and cops on every corner, no, no longer held any allure for me. But New Hampshire, not only was this the state, not the type of place that made it on very many hot lists, but back then, the idea of concentrating thousands of libertarians in one state seemed like a radical idea, possibly a radically stupid idea. Worst case, I told myself, I would have another random place to end to the list of random places I'd lived. But best case scenario, perhaps for once, I'd be getting in very, very early on a very, very good idea. And it turns out I was right. So, you know, I encourage everyone to get this libertarian autobiographies moving towards freedom in today's world. Uh, there are a lot of brilliant people in here. You know, a lot of people I admire who I've brought out to speak at our events over the years who've been, you know, true influences on me. It's really interesting to see where people have come from. And, you know, I, I read a lot of these and there's a lot of ivory tower stuff. And here's the reality. We are the practical of these philosophy, the philosophy of liberty. And, you know, whenever people criticize, oh, free staters, this and that, I'm like, yeah, but, you know, Ron Paul always says, you know, freedom is messy. And it is. So, you know, 
we're, we're a movement, we're a lot of people, there are a lot of moving parts. Sometimes you're not going to like what someone's up to, but you kind of have to learn to roll with the punches. And as long as we're actually all pulling in the same direction, which is to expand liberty in New Hampshire and to see human flourishing, you know, flourish, I guess, just, you know, peace and prosperity and all the good stuff. And, and we're doing it and we want more people to come and to help us build the free state. Well, excellent. Give the uh, Free State uh, website very quickly. So it is fsp.org. Uh, so for freestateproject.org, people can also find me. I blog daily at my website and I do a lot of content. I just became a real estate agent and I'm going to sell a little bit of New Hampshire to every libertarian in the world. I'm going to figure out some tokenized play. So stay tuned for that. That is coming at some stage. And people can find me at carlagarrick.com, and that's G-E-R-I-C-K-E. -E. Well, Carla, thanks so much for this update on all the exciting things going on there. And uh, continued uh, success, and good luck to you, and we'll talk again soon. Thank you, and I, I want to attend one of your murder mysteries. Ah, uh, yes, I'll, I'll, I'll say to folks who are listening or watching who don't know about that, uh, I did mention it in my email newsletter and in my social media, but I held a murder mystery dinner party at my house last weekend, and it was a huge success. Everybody is assigned a role, and then when you get there, you get little briefings on exactly what you should be telling the other people and how you should be acting. And, th and then as time goes on, um, a, a mystery unfolds. One of the people there becomes the victim, and we all have to try to solve the mystery. And it was tremendous fun. It was a 1920s gangster theme, but they're all different themes for these, and we've decided we're going to take this on the road I am about, I don't have the website ready yet, but I'm going to have a website, woodsmystery.com for how you can attend one of these, but we're going to have great fun. Valentine's Day in Las Vegas. We're doing Ooh. a uh, Valentine's themed murder mystery at the Waldorf Astoria. So, Ooh, fancy. you know, you know look, ain't nobody else in the libertarian world doing this, Carla. <laughs> well, I actually have a photo here on my wall of doing one of those 10 years ago here, but you know, who's counting? Okay. 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 <laughs> that's true. But I'm making a whole tour out of it. <laughs> oh, no, it's wonderful. And actually, if you are booking things, we have Liberty Forum in March. That's our our winter event. That's March, I think, 10th through the 14th. I forget the actual dates. But if you're here for that, you could both speak and we could do a murder mystery. Let's see. M M March and April are a little bit tricky for me next year. But anyway, anyway you and I will talk about that off the year. Thanks so much okay. again for doing this. We appreciate it. Thank you. Take care. And thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Become a smarter libertarian in just 30 minutes a day. Visit TomWoods.com to subscribe to the show for free, and we'll see you next time. Like the sound of The Tom Woods Show? My audio production is provided by Podsworth Media. Check them out at Podsworth.com.